Hi, everyone. Harry here to talk about the Fulton County case and the order by the Georgia Court of Appeals that basically uh, makes it a certainty that case will not proceed to trial in 2024. So recall the whole Fonnie Willis debacle uh, over her relationship with the attorney she had appointed to um, run the case. That attorney on order of Judge McAfee is now recused and has left the case. But uh, that that recusal was a condition that Judge McAfee uh, imposed and otherwise um, Fonnie Willis and this likely would have meant her entire office um, would have needed to step away from the case. And uh, G Georgia is a particularly politicized state with real um, cross currents of Dems and Republicans, which is just to say that if Fonnie Willis, and this could still happen down the line, leaves the case, it, be it leaves a pretty big Gap and question mark. Does another DA come in? It, it would anyway, just for uh, administrative reasons, but now there'd be political reasons involving who, who would take up the reins. In any event, that all becomes more academic, at least for 2024, because uh, as McAfee said, all right, but you don't, as long as the, you, the, uh, Prosecuting attorney steps down. You, Fonnie Willis, don't have to, and your office can continue to prosecute the case. Uh, and that was his ruling. And Trump and others of the defendants, including uh, Mark Meadows and Rudy Giuliani, have appealed that ruling. It's before the Court of Appeal. And yesterday, the Court of Appeal stayed the rest of what's going on before McAfee. McAfee had said uh, oh, you guys can appeal that ruling. I, I, uh, you know, give you, I, uh, leave to go and do so. That's something that you look to a district court to do in the, or, or a trial court to do in the first instance. Uh, and he did. Uh, but he said, I'm going to continue. Let's keep working this case. And it's that, um, determination that is that, uh, on which the court of appeal put the kibosh. Uh, yesterday, basically, where the whole thing is off docket, essentially, until we rule. Now, apparently, there's a firm expectation based on um, uh, the constitutional requirements in Georgia that they will rule by next March for what that's worth, which is not very much, because until then, uh, nothing goes forward. So, you know, Fulton County started out um, uh, it, it, with such sort of ambition and possible promise. There was always the um, kind of issue of the logistical and other challenges related to bringing such a sprawling RICO case. But then, um, you know, you would have to put this in the class for Trump of blind luck and for Fonnie Willis, huge self-inflicted wound. I've said uh, and I continue to hold to the view, I, I, there's no real basis, I think, for recusing Fonnie Willis, at least under the standard that the, that McAfee applied, which is any kind of financial conflict of interest. Her, um, uh, you know, dates with uh, Wade, the prosecuting uh, attorney she appointed, uh, you know, or whether he, uh, you know, paid for some airfare or the like just couldn't possibly rise to the level of needing, you know, of an appearance of a conflict or more importantly, it's not even appearance of a conflict. It's the possibility that it would somehow warp, uh, her obligations to prosecute the case aggressively against Trump. It's very hard to see how that could be. Nevertheless, uh, he, they appeal it and the court of appeal now says we are, we're, we're gonna put the case below on hold. So the, the, um, offshoot or consequences of the really colossal poor judgment by Willis now play out in a way that make, makes the case, which we'd been, uh, doing the different calculations along with the other cases. Could it go? When could it? She'd already gotten a few uh, guilty pleas. What happens next? Uh, there was a time, you may recall, where the whole case was uh, tentatively scheduled to go forward um, by now 
uh, all of that, all of that by the boards. Uh, so the, the case will go nowhere until, um, next spring. If it goes, um, if she is then, if the court of appeals decides to, she should have been recused and reverses McAfee, it'll go nowhere for a while until someone's appointed. And at that point, especially if Trump is president, even though it's a state court prosecution, there's a lot of forces, Republican forces in Georgia and up to Washington, a raid against the prosecution and a raid against Willis. So really all bets would be off. They wouldn't be off if he's not, uh, if Trump is not elected, but still they would have to fight through a thicket of different political uh, opposition, especially within the state. So, you know, we have to really put that as a at this point as a future prospect. The indictment doesn't go away, of course. And if they recuse, even if they uh, say she should have been recused, there's this big fact that the uh, grand jury in Fulton County has uh, voted out some really serious charges against Trump and um, help, like 19 other defendants, m most of which still remain in the case. But the basic notion, you know, we've been thinking about it in terms of four cases, uh, the Manhattan case, which has now gone forward and it was looking even then like it might be the only one. Now it looks all the more so. Fulton County has to be put in the ledger of no way in 2024. That leaves just the two federal cases distinctive thing about those is if Trump wins the presidency, he can shut them down with a, uh, you know, wave of his finger, just order the Department of Justice to do it. Of course, the January 6th case now very much caught up in the immunity uh, opinion by the Supreme Court, which we expect within a few weeks. And I'll do another YouTube on Mar-a-Lago where Eileen Cannon uh, has uh, again issued a what looks like a convoluted order that sure doesn't make things go and come any closer to to trial and as long as she's presiding the the um prospects look remote uh and then the supreme court uh, opinion i think is likely to make the prospects of the january 6th trial look remote so we may be left with i think the odds have to be now that we are left with only the felony convictions in New York before the election. You know, if the election goes forward and after the election goes forward, and if Trump loses, then, then they're still alive and the delays matter much, much less. They will, you know, one after the other. I think with, with the important uh, possible exception of Fulton County and how that would work to reappoint a um, prosecutor, if Fonnie Willis is ordered to step down, but you know, all of them stay alive, but, um, the, the two federal ones and who knows what happens to Fulton County are deeply imperiled if Trump wins the presidency. So bye bye for now. We have to say to, um, Fulton County, the casualty of a, you know, bizarre turn of luck for Trump and a egregious, um, lapse of judgment by Fonnie Willis and, this will be playing out now within the court of appeal from, and we'll, we won't hear until the, the spring what even becomes of the case. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.